Hey folks, Mel the Train Tutor back in the studio and back to lead you on another terrain adventure. And this adventure, we're going to be looking at how to customise battle mats. Now for those of you who've been following along on the channel, you'll know I've been getting myself back on my feet with producing the videos and that sort of stuff and making the train. And I've been working on the Swampy set. So we've got Yorick here and we've got them all lined up sort of ready for painting over there. Now as I'm working on those, it occurs to me that I need a play surface and if you check out the actual basing on this yeah you can see it's it's sort of a swampy ready greeny sort of effect it's not your standard sort of basing and I did that because I wanted a certain look to it but going for that certain look sort of gives us a problem i.e the play surface so if you come down you can sort of see that if I put it on there yeah they don't line up at all yeah and I need a play surface for it so I need to customize that so first off let's take a look at what we've got here now what we've got is I don't know what the name of this mat is it's a six by four the rest of it is hanging off down by my legs yeah it's from Deep Cut Studios and if you look at it it's got some very sort of vibrant green areas but it's got some nice swampy bits in which have this really nice green desaturated sort of drab green in it yeah now that's important because i've got that color yeah running through my swamp set and it's also lines up with what i want to do with my actual resin effects so this works really well the issue is it's green tint whereas i need it sort of a brownie ready tint with green areas i.e we need to customize it so when it comes to customizing battle mats there's actually a few things to do yeah i've done it a few times but i think the best way to describe this video is i'm 60 percent yeah i know exactly what i'm doing and then there's 40 percent where i'm looking at that and i'm looking at this and i'm looking at my paints and thinking we may have to wing some stuff here we really may have to wing some stuff and i don't know i'm hoping yeah, I can get away with just a brown skin and we'll get, watch what, we'll get 90% of the way there. There's some red flecks in this, if you look at it, if I bring it up close, yeah, you can sort of see there's quite a variety, but it is on a brown base level. Yeah, you can see that sort of in these areas and that sort of stuff. Yeah, so I have definitely got to get that brown in there to a certain extent. Now, the best way to do the customizing stage is actually in stages. Yeah, and you can stipple it, you can stain it, that sort of stuff. I actually prefer airbrushing it. It gives me a little bit more control. Yeah, and I can control how little I put down on it. Now, I have airbrushed one of these before. Yeah, in fact, I've played around with a few of them. You want a low pressure. Yeah, you want a dusting effect. It's very easy to, to get quite concentrated areas on these sort of things yeah and so with that in mind what we're going to do is we're going to have a bit of a play i'm going to get a basic sort of idea of it while we play on camera yeah and then i'm going to have a go at doing the sections we'll bring it back once we've got it to that so i've got my airbrush and i've got my sort of ready brown that i use for the base color yeah and if i bring this plate up yeah you can sort of see sort of see what I'm looking at yeah so that's the effect now what we're going to do is for the first instance the areas that bother me most are these bright green ones yeah because they're the ones that I mean that is not going to take much to match it up with but that is a clear you can see, I mean do you see the difference yeah so we're going to start knocking these back first yeah and this is all it is but and that is exactly why you should be careful. Splodges. Let's clean that up quick. Once the paint's in, it's difficult to get out, but you can smudge it and make it look like it's part of it. And in other news, moving forward, be more bloody careful, Bose. Well, 
we may have to flick some paint on and smudge it just to blend that it that effect in but i'm hoping it'll get lost right be a little bit more careful are we dripping from there is that what the issue is where's that paint come from right so just a gentle browning to knock that green back initially yeah and then let's have a look yeah we're going to need a lot more than that i think oh Not, we are knocking a lot of brown into this. Look, it's thinned down. But if I bring this over, yeah, it's starting to get there. Right, my next job is I just want to get and knock back all these greens, yeah, and sort of knock it back to a certain level before I take it too far. When you're customizing these battle mats, one of the things you have to be careful about is taking it too far in one place, yeah, and then being forced to take it too far across the board to match it. So this is about me doing a skim initially, yeah? Get it to roughly to the same as that. So we're gonna knock the greens back. And then once that's dried, yeah, we can have a look at it. Now, if I just very quickly drag that up, yeah? You can sort of see the clear line there. Yeah, the difference. Yeah, and if I put that there, you can see that it does make a clear difference. It's starting to blend in, yeah? Just, but we've got to get cracked on. So with that in mind, do I'm going to get myself spraying and I'll see you once we've got the basic coat down. See you after the flash. Right, I'm just coming up to the halfway mark. And if you take a look, you can definitely see there is a difference. It looks rather shyish here. And that looks more like Mordor, which is exactly what I was after. But if we bring it up, yeah, if we put our original Yorick here, yeah, you can see, yeah, clearly does not match. But if we start to move it over to here, yeah, it's a bit difficult with it being over there, but it blends in a lot better. Let me put it there. Yeah, the edges go in, it's got the right coloration. Now, just to run across what I've actually done here, I haven't just given it a general coat. What I've done is if you look, I'm trying to spot them, there's areas of patches of brown. What I've done is first I've come in, yeah, and all these really, really light green areas, I've started to knock back significantly, yeah, until they become drab green, yeah, which matches the green on here so they don't clash, yeah. The next thing is there's sort of these light areas, yeah, they've got some rocky areas, yeah, and these are particularly around the swamp, there's a bit pale. So in those cases, I've come in, I've given those a, a light dusting, so we've still got the detail yeah but they're no longer sort of contrast with the base they now sort of blend in with it and it works really well and i know it's a little bit difficult on this camera but i'll take you through and i'll move it about once it's all done yeah but it's all coming together nicely so now what i've got to do is now i'm sort of happy with the sort of look and the shades I've got to continue this and get an even coating and basically change all this vibrant green and all the vibrant green I've got here. Yeah. And sort of knock it back to match with this. So that's the battle plan. Yeah. It's all about doing little bits of dusting, choosing your spot, giving it a blast, then moving on. Yeah, you can always come back and increase the depth. Yeah, what you can't do is take it off. So go gentle to start off with. Right, let's crack on.
Right, we're kind of on the final stretch. I've done pretty much all of it. All I've got is this sort of, pretty much probably about just under a quarter to do. But it's got some nice greens here. It's got some really vibrant greens here. And it's got some of those, the light swampy effects around here, which means it's a nice little sort of, nice little collection of the stuff I've been working on with the rest of the mat. And it's a good opportunity for me to actually show you. Right, so obviously I've got an airbrush. Yeah, I'm running my paint really thinned. Yeah, and my first area is, as I'm doing it, is always these greens, these need to go. So I'm doing it as a general sort of, sort of, what's the term, tint. Yeah, so nice and broad, and I'm just spreading it around, and you can see, you can see the green slowly disappearing. And as soon as I start feeling it's getting a little bit like close to brown, that's enough. We are going to go darker, but I don't want to go too dark. So take it to there. So come along, we've got some greens there. Some greens there. And spray all this. Just like that. Yeah. And I'm just looking for the greens. So that bit's done, we've got over here. By approaching it and just spotting it and picking spots and actually spraying where, where, what are you trying to say, Bose? Right, what I'm trying to say is, it'd be very easy just to get, go over it and just work with it methodically, yeah? And just give an even, even coat. But two things can happen there. One, you can just end up having an even tint to it. And sometimes that can't work, but also, you can get a slight change in the amount you're putting down as you do it. And you get like a graduated sort of tone on it and it doesn't really work. Yeah, the best way to approach these things is to pick the features you need to alter. Yeah, and then specifically apply them. So in my case, the most important are the greens. So I'm coming along and it's like, yeah, let's get rid of these. Quick, quick. So I'm looking along here. I'm looking at all these bright greens here. I'm like, yeah, you're going. Yeah, and I'm specifically spraying just where they're green. Yeah, yeah, I could come along and I could spray around the areas and that sort of stuff, but I'm coming in to do those anyway. Yeah, and as I said, what I don't want to do is overdo it. Yeah, so if we come over here, get rid of this last bit of vibrant green ba, ba, ba. that's quite a big one so i can just blast it out there we are now the nice low pressure means i get a nice sort of dusting rather than hot spotting And it does take a while to go over the greens. Oh, a bit more. A really long airbrush hose really pays off on this. Right, so greens are knocked back. Yeah, now we've got this light area around here, okay? Now we want to retain these details, of these tracks and stuff, yeah? We also want to retain this sort of green looking puddles. Yeah, so what we're gonna do is very lightly dust. And we're gonna keep going until it's enough that we've changed, yeah? And I'm just gonna work my way around and as I work my way around these swamps, what I'm doing is I'm hitting the areas in between, but I'm trying to avoid the actual swamp areas because that's a nice green and I quite like it. And by approaching it this way, what we're doing is we're sort of, we're breaking it up a lot more. We're making it a lot more varied, which works with battle mats. Mm -hmm. 
So that bit's done. We need to do round here, this general light area here. Yeah, so we'll knock this back. And then once we've knocked this back, we can go back, revisit the greens and just touch them down a bit more. Yeah, coming together. There's a bit there, a bit there, a bit there. Now we need to do these greens. One thing I will very quickly do is just in this corner. Yeah, there's Janjanski. I don't, I think, is that the designer or the, the name? Well, let's just make that disappear, Leo. There you go. Right, crack it on. Get rid of that bit. Right, it's coming together. Let's tone these greens down. And when I'm doing this, as I said before, I'm looking at what's underneath it and I'm looking for the colour change. And the moment I feel it changes from green, I'm happy. Doesn't have to be brown. It just doesn't, it needs to go from the vibrant green. Now, one of the effects with, with doing this spotting effect is you miss bits, which means you, you play that hunting game. When you're looking at it, going, where, where do I need to do? There. Right here. Right. I think you've seen enough of how I'm doing it. I've got the last little bits to do off. Then I've got to just do some spotting, have a quick nose, see if there's any bits that I feel like I've missed or need changing at all. Yeah, which you can only really do once you've given it a chance to settle. So the battle plan is, I'm going to finish this last little corner off. Yeah, I'm then going to go buy myself a sausage roll for my dinner. Yeah, eat me sausage roll, give this a chance to dry, and we'll come back once it is. We'll have a look at it once, once that's done. Right, crack it on time. Right, folks, that's lunch done with. And as you can see, taking the time to lay the battle mat out completely so I can see it in totality. Yeah, this is for the last bits of just sort of picking the last bits I need to work on. And there are areas. This side in particular, yeah, is a little bit more greener. If you look on this shot, you can see it's slightly more greener. This needs knocking back just a little bit more, just to put it in line with that side. Now, if I get my pieces out, if I put it there, you can still see sort of a bit of a more clear outline. But if I put it over here to these areas, they blend perfectly and it's coming together great. So my last job now is I just need to go around and pick out some very specific spots where I think it's still a bit too green. I need to go up this edge because I've sort of, I've got, it, I've got a brown line and I've sort of missed the edge. So I need to blend that in. And there's a couple of light areas that I've missed. So that's the next job. So I'm just very going to quickly hit the airbrush up, power it up, and then we should be done. So I'll see you in a flash. Well, that took a little while, but it's turned out beautiful. Now, the first thing to remember when looking at this is just remember, Let's have a quick skip back to the start of this video. Remember how green it was. Yeah. <laughs> Do you see that? Look at the difference. Now this is just spraying it with the same base coat that I've used for the ground on this. And that's all I really needed to do. I didn't need to take this much further, but it's about applying it. So let's very quickly take you through. First off, I knock back the most vibrant areas. Yeah just so I knew what I was working with. After that, I started to tone it, specifically picking areas such as the swampy areas, the rocky areas, 
and hitting them individually and knocking them back. Once I've hit all the areas, we pulled the mat out as a complete one and sort of blended them in, make sure that one side matched the other, that it was even across because it wasn't. That side was a lot darker than this side was, yeah? And that's quite interesting because I'd actually worked that way, which means I was working on that side and this side at the same time and I still had a variation that I didn't see until I got my mat out completely and sort of looked it over for the final one. And then what I did is I went round and I specifically put a darker edge around in the corners and really sort of muddied up the edge. There's a quite a bit of variation and it's quite a little bit lighter in the center. And I wanted to keep that. That's where the swampy area is. Yeah, whereas the greenery was more around the edge. So we've knocked the greenery down, but I've tried to keep the green in the swamp areas because I do have green on the models and it's worked beautifully. Yeah, as you can tell. Yeah, so now I have a custom battle mat. My next job is to take all of these that are on the back of there I don't want to put it on the mat because it hasn't been painted or sealed, so the plaster will get on it. And tie those into that and complete the set. So, that's my next jobby. But, I hope you've enjoyed this little sort of tutorial. It might take you along on this venture. Obviously, if you have liked it, the like button is down below. If you're new to the channel, make sure you hit the subscribe button. There's like 700 terrain videos on here. There's a hell of a library. So hit the subscribe button just so you've got it and you don't lose the channel. And here comes the plea, guys. As you know, I'm getting back on my feet, getting back on the channel after my, my illness and that sort of stuff. Things are going really well. I'm getting stuck in terrain. I'm loving it. There's plaster on my board. See, that's why I didn't want to put it down. Yeah, but I can't do this without your help, guys. Now, there's a couple of ways you can help me out. Best one is jump in on the Patreon, pledge a dollar, back a video. Yeah, you only have to back one video a month. Yeah, I produce about five, but you only have to pledge to support one video a month, pledge a dollar or whatever you want. And that helps keep the lights on, the cameras rolling and me in here. If you don't want to do the regular monthly thing, there's the PayPal for a one-off tip. And there's also the kit list on Amazon, an Amazon wish list. So if you don't want to send cash, you can get me something that's useful for the studio. All of those support me and I do need your support. So please consider jumping on the clan or jumping in the links down below. And if not, yeah, just a like and a share will help. Most importantly, get yourself in the comments. Tell me what you think about the technique. Tell me what you've done with mats as well, if you've got some stuff to share with me. Yeah, I'm interested in learning. And I'm going to crack on with these and carry on with this adventure. And until the next time, guys, all the best, yeah? Ta-ra.